Another design flaw was the Titanic's hull, which harbored a hidden weakness, invisible to her passengers but revealed decades later through analysis of recovered wreckage. Tests on these steel fragments showed unusually high sulfur content, causing the metal to lose up to 70% of its flexibility in freezing temperatures. Rather than absorbing the iceberg impact by bending, the steel fractured like glass, transforming what could have been a manageable puncture into a catastrophic rupture that overwhelmed the ship's compartment system. Below decks, the Titanic's third-class passengers faced a deadly design flaw of their own. Complex corridor layouts with minimal signage created a labyrinth, but the true danger came from the gates installed to comply with general maritime regulations. These barriers, meant to separate steerage passengers from other classes during normal operations, remained closed in several sections during the emergency, effectively trapping hundreds in rapidly flooding compartments with no path to the lifeboats above. The Gustloff's vulnerabilities manifested in her emergency systems. Her lifeboats, already reduced during military conversion, became useless when they froze to the decks in Baltic winter conditions. As the vessel listed increasingly to port after the torpedo impacts, the physics of evacuation became impossible. Starboard lifeboats swung too far from the tilting ship to be boarded, while port side boats couldn't clear the hull. Communication failures compounded the chaos, as civilian radios operated alongside military equipment using incompatible frequencies and protocols. This hybrid system broke down precisely when coordination was most crucial, delaying assistance for vital minutes. Based on design and purpose alone, Titanic was more preventable.